Okay, welcome to part 2 of our how to blow things up tutorial in Greenfoot. Remember we had just prepared a rock and a bit of debris. Uh, we haven't written any code in these yet, so they don't do anything yet. We just have prepared, pre prepared the classes and the images. Now the question is um, how do we make these move? The rock we don't really want to make move at all. It can just sit there and then be blown up, but then the bits of debris should move around. Um, there are some helper classes available on the Greenfoot website that we can use. Um, be I'll go here, open the Greenfoot website. On the Greenfoot website, in the here's the for programmers section, there are some support classes here. And there's a few classes here that are generally um, uh, useful for things. There's a vector class that I'm going to use, and there's a smooth mover that makes use of the vector. The vector class just stores a direction and a, a speed in which it moves, and that can be used by objects to store information about their movement and, and then influence their movement by adding other vectors to it. So if you look at the vector class, here it is. Um, what I'm going to do is I will put that to the side first, and I'm creating here a vector class. A vector is not an actor, it's a helper. There will be helper objects for my actor objects, so uh, they shouldn't be subclasses of vectors. So I go up here and I create a new class and I call it vector. Um, and I get that down here. And here's my vector class. And of course, as always, I have my default skeleton here. But in this case, I don't want it. I delete all that. And then I go to this web page. And here on my web page, there's the vector class. I copy all of that. I do a select all and copy and paste that in here. So here's my prepared vector class from the Greenfoot website. Um, that all compiles fine. Now I need to, if you look at the vector class, I've got that here now. I can switch that to the documentation view so you can see. So I have a um, construct default constructor that has a vector that has essentially this is the zero vector and I have one with direction and length uh, that I can create vectors um, in different uh, directions and different strengths. And now I have here on the Greenfoot website, if we go back, the smooth mover class which uses vectors to create movement. I'm going to use that one as well. So again as before I make my class here, the smooth mover is an subclass of an actor. So I create here my smooth mover class. It doesn't need an image at all at the moment because um, we use that just as a superclass. And we do the same again. We delete the whole um, default source code in smooth mover. We go to the website here, select all, copy, get rid of this and paste it in here. So here's my smooth mover class. Um, if we compile this, if you look at the smooth mover, by the way, here now, if you look at the documentation rather than the implementation, um, <coughs> there is a smooth mover with a vector or without a vector, and then we can increase the speed, giving a vector that gets added on to the current vector. So this mover will remember the vector um, of its current movement, and by increased speed we can then influence the direction and the velocity of the movement by adding on various vectors later on. Uh, what is necessary now is the debris, that is the bit that should actually be moving, so we need to make this a subclass of the smooth mover. We go in here and say this now is a subclass of smooth mover and not of actor anymore. And when we compile this all, then it rearranges it here. So we have an actor, subclass smooth mover, and debris is one of those. And so what we can do now is we can add on a vector um, to our to our debris class. Um, here we can now um, uh, let's create um, let's make a constructor first here for our bit of debris. Um, so I create here a default constructor. And there I want to, um, let's say we have gravity uh, as a gravity is a constant. So I make here a private, private stat, stat 
automatic final um, vector that I call gravity. And that's a new vector. And the vector has two parameters. One is the direction. Um, 0 is to the right, 90 is down. So the gravity goes straight down. That's 90 degrees. And let's start with, say, 1.5 pixels. So per act loop this will accelerate at 1.5 pixels down. Um, and then here, um, let's forget about the constructor. Let's say here uh, the smooth mover, remember, has a move method, it can move, and it has an increased speed that takes a vector. So let's say every time we act we increase the speed by adding gravity onto the current speed and then we oops, move. Okay, let's try that out. We take a bit of debris, put it in here, and click run. And it moves down and it goes slowly faster. Of course this is very sort of stop motion animation, but if I make this faster, if I put this somewhere down here and run it way, there we go. Okay, that's not too bad. Um, let's try that with this speed from the start. So I put it in there. Whoa, okay, that looks okay. Uh, except that in this case, let's look at that again, the beginning of the fall, that looks okay, except that it um, wraps around when it falls out of the bottom of the world, it comes in at the top. I don't want this. And that is because of the way the smooth mover is written. The move method in smooth mover does the wrapping around. So if I look at the source code, somewhere here is the move. There it says move. Um, and it says we are changing our position here. So this is the actual movement. And there's a check. It says if I'm getting out of the world wa that way, then I come in the other end. Or if I'm getting out of the world wa that way, then I'm coming in there. If I'm getting out of the world that way, and that is at the bottom, then I come in at the top. And if I get out of the world at the top, I come in at the bottom. So let's just change all this and just say if out of world, if I get out of the world, um, then I just want to disappear from the world. So if I go out of the world, this um, bit of debris just disappears. So we do something like get world remove object this. So we are removing ourselves from the world. And else, if we have not, if we're not out of the world, then we take this and we move the location. Um, now we have to Oops, I forgot it. the full stop there. Now the out of world I have to code. I haven't written that yet. So here I make myself a private um, Boolean uh, out of world method um, which checks whether I'm out of world. And the checks are actually all here. This is I'm out of the world either if x is greater than the width of the world, or if x is less than zero, or if y is greater than the height of the world. So essentially what I want to return here is this. Well, I want to return x is greater than the world, or x is greater than 0, uh, less than 0, of course. Or we have the next if check, because here we had already the all the checks for getting out of the world already in our source code, so we can we have the right source code here. Uh, we can just organize that a bit differently. So essentially, um, being out of the world means if x is greater than this, or x is less than that, x is greater than, or y is greater than the height, or y is less than zero, then I'm out of the world. 